Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of the Racing Game Chronicles. If you're host, Harrison101. And in this episode of the Racing Game Chronicles, we're going back to May 2010. And a look at one of one of my most played racing games since I've got a 360. And that was Blur. Um, Blur is um, a, well, should I say, was an arcade racing game created by the same guys that brought you Project Gotham Racing 4, and that's Bizarre Creations. And it was, it kind of came out at a very weird kind of time, because it came out back in, like I said, May 2010, almost exactly the same time that Blackrock Studios, the, guy that the guys that designed Pure, a very underrated quad bike in title, came out with split second velocity which so uh, yeah you, you had all i like to call the great arcade racing game war of 2010 between blur and split second um two decent racing games that went almost head to head against each other me personally i always thought blur was the better game having gone through and played both of them but uh why is that in the first part of this you guess you could say two-parter of the racing game chronicles i'll tell you why and we're going to talk about blur first of all like I said, Blur is an arcade racer, but its main gimmick was powered up racing. And for me, this game is essentially what happens when you combine a Mario Kart with F1 2014. Wait, well, hang on a minute, that's not quite right, is it? It's like, it's like putting F1 2014 and Mario Kart. That's like saying having Mario Kart mixed in with more Mario Kart. But um, we'll, 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 we'll discuss it a little bit more in depth now. So basically, the game has a very kind of rave-like atmosphere to it. And it, in essence, it's a bunch of licensed cars, but they all have power-ups, similar to what you would get in Mario Kart, for example. So you're combining the basic elements of an arcade racing game with a super arcade racing game or a kart racing game like Mario Kart or other games that have tried the, you know, essentially the same Mario Kart kart racing format from previous years. You know, there's about 50 cars in the game split into four different categories from, I think, from Class C, which has more mediocre stuff like, an, like the Audi TT and the Hummer H2, going up to the big boys like, like the Koenigsegg um, CCX and um, the Renault Megane Trophy car, which is basically a bunch of, you know, very, very fast cars like Skylines and Vipers and whatnot, so some top-tier stuff. So they uh, they actually have done a decent job with when it comes to car licenses. It's, it's not amazing, it's not a Gran Turismo or a even a PGR4 by any stretch of the imagination, but they did do a solid job in getting a good amount of cars in there. Um, Essentially, the, the, you know, the game, like I said, has got a very much a bit of a rave kind of look to it. It looks a lot like a London nightclub at night, basically. A lot of dark colours, a lot of neon everywhere, a lot of flashy lights everywhere and whatnot. It kind of works for the most part, but I mean, it's a matter of taste and subjectiveness. But I think a little bit of a, bright and, a, little bit of a more brightened colour scheme, I think, would have been easier on the eye, so to speak. I mean, sometimes you've got to squint to look at some things, and that's never a good thing. And there's a lot of dark time locations as well. And a lot of the game is based off of real life locations like London, Tokyo's docks, Barcelona, Tokyo, those kind of places. So there's a lot of city style racing, a little bit of like farm and dirt track stuff as well. That's why cars like the Hummer H2 are in the game because those cars, while slower, provide a different kind of aspect because the cars in the game are split in, into different kind of handling groups. You've got the very grippy cars like, like the Audi TT and the Audi R8, which is designed to be, you know, break in, you know, break in, more conventional. So you break in, you know, you, you meet the apexes and whatnot. Whereas other cars like the Chevrolet Camaro are much more drifty. So, you know, you're meant to use the B button to handbrake, turn into a lot more corners and, you know, obviously deliberately oversteer a lot and not. So there's a nice range of handling styles there. And of course, you've got the Hummers, which are better off-road. So they have better speed and traction on the off-road tracks and the bigger cars tend to have more health. Um, but obviously the main things you want to talk about are the power-ups in the game and like I said it is very much like a kart racer there's a lot of you know stuff you would see in Mario Kart for example the shunt is basically the red shell the, the giant red power-up you'll see in there which basically fires a big a big um, orb in, in, in the direction of the car nearest to you and tries to hit them basically you've got the mine which is like the banana basically um, you've got the bolt which is more like the, like the triple green shells and whatnot so you just fire them in a straight line and if they hit they cause some damage and they cause your car to move off balance and whatnot and obviously slow them down so 
you know, I like I like the power ups a lot overall. You can see you can see them all in the course of the video, and you can see what they do. And I didn't really get a chance to highlight this very much, but there's actually a fair amount of depth in these power ups, as in a lot of them also have hidden uses. So, for instance, you know, um, essentially you could have a shun which you can fire forwards, but you can also fire it backwards to put people off. You know, mines you can fire forwards. So if you're in a dead straight line, you can fire it directly in front of another car, and that might be able to hit them. Again, you can fire bolts backwards. You can use turbos instead of using them as a boost. You can use them as an air brake. So it will slow your car down first for the apex of a corner, and then it will give you the boost afterwards to get you back up to speed again. Very good for hairpin corners and whatnot. Shocks are kind of like blue shells, an example, where you know, it's a bunch of lightning bolts which hit the leader and hopefully will bring the pack closer together. So there is actually a fair amount of depth to this game. And if, if, if you're willing to put the hours in, you can work out different ways of doing things. And it's actually very, very clever. And in terms of that, also the cars have what you call mod layouts. So, you know, you can modify a car, not on the physical sense, unfortunately, which is kind of a shame there's a lack of... Um, car customization in the game on the whole which is ultimately quite disappointing but at the same time there's also an, an, an element of mod layout so for example you can have an ability where you can fire four bolts instead of three or you can get a nitro every time you get 500 fans fans obviously you get in the game for doing exciting things like drifting turboing driving cleanly you know firing weapons at people and obviously little things are like fan rewards, like you see, you saw the gates earlier on in the video where you can drive through certain gates in the right order, you know, you get more fans, and obviously if you get more fans, you get more lights, and obviously more lights means more fans, and you unlock more stuff. If you play the game properly, the game reminds me a lot of the Call of Duty franchise when it was still, you know, ridiculously good. Not so much now, but it has the kind of mod layout feeling that a lot of the games does. And, you know, it's, it's a little bit prominent in single player, but it's a lot more prominent in multiplayer, which I'll get to in a bit. But um, overall, single player is actually not that great, unfortunately. Single player is kind of short. It's only about six or seven hours long. Um, each of the eight bosses in the game has about seven events per category. And you don't even need all of them in order to unlock the boss fight at the end. But the boss fights are only are just simple one-on-one -on -one races, so they're, they're not that exciting. And there's only three different forms of uh, major um, events in the uh, single player. There's your standard race. There's checkpoint events, where it's basically you against the clock, where um, you basically try and pass through gates while using nitros and, and added time bonuses to get to the goal as fast as possible to get, you know, obviously bronze, silver, or gold awards pretty straightforward stuff there and there's a destruction mode which is actually pretty fun you're in a car you only have bolt power ups and you're just basically firing at big targets to score points the problem is the targets also fire stuff back at you like bolts like shunts um and um for, for, for shunts and mines in the bigger cars to, to, so you wrap up points we've also got to take care of your car and make sure it doesn't get wrecked because if you run out of health you wreck your car, that's the end of the event. So, Destruction's actually not bad, but there's not enough to really break up the single player. There's not a massive range of cars. You'll have your favourites, but then you won't, ever, you won't ever use like 80% of the roster, which is kind of a shame, really. There's no real, obviously, real sense of car collecting, or there's not really much of a reason to use multiple cars in the game. The off-roaders are kind of slow, and it doesn't really have a benefit of using them over just one of the conventional cars to, to drive over dirt. It just doesn't really make much sense. The game's the single player's kind of short, it's a little bit repetitive, and you can't customize your cars. You can only change the, the paint color, which is just a little bit boring. However, like as much as you know I, I rag about the single player, the multiplayer is excellent. The, the multiplayer, it's a shame I'm, I'm reviewing this game four and a half years after it came out, because the multiplayer is one of the best in any racing game I have ever played. And I, I mean this with my hand on my heart. It's multiplayer is 10 out of 10 level quality. It's excellent. Like I said, remember I said before it was the Call of Duty of racing games? It's very much like that. You get mod layout, so you can basically do things like have a laser sight on your bolts, or basically use your shield to be able to absorb power-ups and gain health. You can mod the way your car handles and the way it uses power-ups to make your car better and to suit your driving style. And the lobbies were great. 20 player online racing 20 
How many racing games these days can brag about 20 player online? We still can't get 20 players in racing games now in 2015 down the road. Blur was doing that ages ago and it had a social interaction feature. You could share your achievements on Facebook and Twitter. Something that is quite far ahead of its time. I think it was the first game I've ever, I've ever seen that could actually do that on a console. Um, something I, I, I've not personally seen before in a game. So Blur was actually quite ahead of its time in that department. But, you know, multiplayer had a great mix of powered up racing like you would get in a single player. You'd have multiplayer that, that could be up to 20 players strong. We had big demolition derby style events with weapons to score points, which was just so much fun. It was absolutely excellent. And, you know, a, a wide range of lobbies to suit every kind of player. You could even race in teams. So, you know, whoever had the best overall score as a team would win. And, you know, and it even had a prestige system. So you would gain more and more as you ranked up through the levels and whatnot. But if you wanted a challenge, you could give yourself a prestige stamp and try and climb through the ladder again. So, and up, up to 10th prestige. So you'd obviously have special libraries for, for cars and whatnot as you went through the game as like a, a stamp of you know obviously brilliance to get through a prestige and whatnot but you'd also have to you'd also lose all your gains and power-ups and whatnot from getting to level 50 so overall the multiplayer on blur was absolutely superb it's a real shame the multiplayer is not active anymore really i mean there was only 20 players online when i logged on to play earlier and obviously they're all going to be really really good players it's a bit like playing left for dead in the sense of you know, if you ever go online with that now, it's only players who really know what they're doing. So if you're new and you're coming into this game, it's a little bit of a shame. So as a result, the game hasn't really aged well in that sense, because obviously, as with most racing games, multiplayer lobbies die off as time goes by, and that means you're left with the single player, which was kind of lackluster, which is just kind of a shame, really. But overall, Blur is an excellent, excellent racing game. If you want to play multiplayer as an overall package it's still very very good it's not quite on the same levels of burnout free and pgr that i reviewed earlier in the series but it is a lot of fun and like i said it's the call of duty really of arcade racing games and that's not a bad thing quite frankly it's it, it, it captures the good parts of the fps franchise puts them in a kart racing game uses licensed cars i mean the cars don't handle that well and they're not that fun to drive you're gonna bang off the walls a little bit here and there but overall i really enjoyed blur and i'd actually quite recommend this one if you're into your arcade racing games now if you guys have got a copy of split second you don't mind donating to the channel so i can review it for the next episode get in touch that would be fantastic i'll give you full shout out on one in the video and that would be fantastic so if you have a copy of split second you don't mind giving away let me know and get in touch that would be fantastic but i hope you guys enjoyed the video i hope you guys enjoyed the enjoyed the gameplay i'll leave it to enjoy the rest of blur i hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the racing game chronicles and i'll catch you guys next time sayonara